In this video, we're going to be comparing the Nike Infinity React versus the New Balance Fuel Cell Prism. Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to 40 Runs. Now, if this is your first time at 40 Runs, I want you to smash that little ping button down there that says subscribe on it. Go to our Facebook page and join the 40 Runs running community and check out the description. There's a link to both of these shoes down there. Right, so we've got two mild stability shoes on the channel today, so let's get stuck in. Right guys, so here they are, the Nike Infinity React and we've got the New Balance Fuel Cell Prism. Now, I think both of these shoes are awesome. I'm gonna put that straight out there now. And I've spent a lot of time in this shoe, as you can see, um, and I've been putting some miles in this shoe. I found that I'm in this shoe um, a little bit more than I was expecting. And I'll get onto why in a minute. But let's, before we get stuck into all that, let's have a look at some of the stats, the features, etc. We'll start with a new kid on the block, the New Balance Fuel Cell Prism. So this is based loosely on the TC, the similar design, but this doesn't have a carbon plate. You can get um, the colorway which is identical pretty much to the TC. So you've got this um, high energy return fuel cell midsole. Like I said a second ago, this is a lightweight mild stability shoe. You've got the subtle medial post on the inside. Um, you've got a rippled rubber outsole, very breathable mesh upper. It's 8.6 ounces and it's got a six mil drop. Then we go on to the, uh, oh, it's 110 pounds. Then we go on to the Nike Infinity React. Now this shoe's been out a little while. And you can get this now for under 100 pounds. Um, but on the website of Nike, it's still about 134 pounds, but do not pay that much money, people. So you've got the React Foam, uh, which is awesome. Um, you've got an all new version of the Flyknit on the upper. It's 291 grams. Uh, it's got a nine mil drop. And according to Nike, and I do love this because I found this on their website, I'd never seen this before. According to Nike, which is great marketing, in testing, Runners in the Nike React Infinity run missed 52% less consecutive running sessions, three or more brackets, due to running related pain that those running in the Nike Air Zoom structure, 22, which this replaced. You've got to love marketing, right? <laughs> so what they're saying is, is this shoe is meant to uh, increase, or decrease, sorry, the chances of you getting injured. Really? Okay, anyway. So let's firstly talk about this shoe. So you've got elements of stability here in the heel. The idea is, is that this will stop you moving around. You've got a wider footprint here and it's all about sort of, yeah, just adding some stability and structure to your to your shoe basically. They're kind of guide rails. Um, if you look at like an Ultra Provision, for example, it's got a traditional guide rail on it. They kind of gone down that road. You've got, a, a, what's the best way to describe it? Just more structure in the heel um, area, in the heel counter, let's call it. And the overall shoe, as I said, is all about making you a little bit more stable, but it's not a true stability shoe, if that makes any sense. Flying, it's great. I love the fact you can just slip these on because I'm lazy, as you know, people by now. And it just feels cool. One big, big problem that everybody moaned about was the heel slippage. A lot of the Nike shoes at the moment, I don't know why, they seem to have gone off on one and a lot of shoes are coming out with a lot of heel slippage, which is really weird. I got around that by just sort of lacing them down really tight up here, but loosening them up there. That's how I kind of got around it. The outsole, which has taken a bit of a beating, is, uh, is actually performed better than I thought it would. So overall, even though this shoe feels quite heavy, it's a good shoe. Then we get onto the new kid on the block. So, like I said, loosely based on the TC. This is an awesome, awesome shoe. The fuel cell midsole is fantastic, but in the TC, I had problems with the fuel cell um, midsole because it is very, very soft. Um, let me just show you. This stuff is, is extremely soft. And if you mild pronate or, or fatigue pronate like I do, um, if I'm tired or I'm starting to run or I'm running lazy, running bad, usually it's because I'm chatting, um, I tend to get a little ache and pain on the inside of my shin. Um, and that's because I'm collapsing in. If you look at the video review I did of the Fuel Cell TC, you'll even see in that, I am actually uh, collapsing on the inside. So when they came out and said, we're gonna be bringing out a mild stability version, I was like, oh, ship it in. So here's the post. So you've got this medial post in there, which is like a denser foam, um, and that adds the stability, so you don't sort of start collapsing too much on the inside. That's roughly the idea. The outsole is awesome, it's a little bit dirty, but I ran these in the wet today uh, and they held their own. They did get a bit dirty and I was worried about the green and they did get a little bit dirty, which is a bit annoying. So maybe go for the other colorway, even though these look awesome. Um, but yeah, the outsole was fantastic actually, really, really fantastic. Um, but the overall 
feel of the shoe, uh, the, the lacing, uh, the tongue. New Balance make a really comfortable shoe around the whole heel area. I have had to put a runner's knot in these to get a bit of a lockdown on them. Um, some shoes I do, some shoes I don't. Ha uh, I felt like I needed that. I did that after a couple of runs. Um, and yeah, it's just a really comfortable place to be. The upper, apart from looking awesome with the New Balance across here, is super breathable. It's, it's just nice and lightweight and it just feels great when you're out there. So, the question is, which one do I prefer? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I prefer the New Balance. I just like the lightness of it. I like the fuel cell. Don't get me wrong, React Foam is one of my favorite foams, right? My, one of my favorite midsoles even, sorry. But I just love the responsiveness you get out of this fuel cell. I love how it looks. I think it looks awesome. Um, but yeah, I just prefer the overall feel of it. You don't get that heel slippage that you can get in the Flyknit and the uh, React, sorry, Infinity React. Um, yeah, it just it just feels great. It just feels like a more traditional shoe, which uh, I really do enjoy. If you're new to the channel, I prefer a more traditional feeling shoe. Um, and yeah, the medial support it is adding a little bit of stability. I haven't had any aches and pains where I've been going out, and it, and I just love the fact that you can pick up the pace in this. You can in this, right? And this goes along, and you go along, and it feels great. But with this thing, it just feels nice. That cushioned but responsive ride it is more noticeable, I would say, than the React. So. For me, for choice, and at the moment, if you got, if you was to buy them both on the official website, this is 20 odd pound cheaper. But like I say, you can pick this up for under 100 pounds now. But at 110 pounds, I think this is the one to go for. So if you are a mild pronator, you know, you do collapse a little bit, this is probably a really, really good shoe to check out if you're looking for an up-tempo daily trainer.